she's cheating, he's cheating, it's a messy environment. What's high value about that? Who envies that? So these people then that are in these open relationships, are the, essentially what you're saying then is they're just they're just in those relationships, not because they're truly, in essence, happy with it, mm. but they're just dealing with wounds that they don't even know they're dealing with. Pleasure-seeking. What's happening is there's some level of internal turmoil and they're thinking pleasure-seeking is going to get rid of that sadness, it's going to get rid of that emptiness, it's going to get rid of that shame. But pleasure-seeking is the opposite of happiness. True happiness comes from stable, healthy peace. So what about all these girls then that do like things like OnlyFans and stuff like that, that are, are going around, they're making 100k a month, mm-hmm. they're calling themselves girl bosses, all this kind of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. On a psychological level... what? Are, are 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 they that or you know are they the girl boss are, or, or is that is that a false economy that they've bought into being sold a narrative by social media i don't believe any human being can um reveal and allow others to access the most sacred part of them without feeling some shame i'm sure the money helps i'm sure the money helps but there's an element of shame and guilt every time you I do that. And then afterwards, you have to think, God, this dirty old man. Oh, I wish I didn't have to kiss him, but I'll just do it anyway. And so when that you have that extreme level of shame and guilt, the only way to feel good about it is to pretend you're in control of it and to take control. And how you take control? By, by boasting about it pretending it's great it's a bit like people who are super super overweight and they say i'm i'm fabulous i'm big boned yeah i'm fabulous i'm beautiful i'm this no you're unhealthy you struggle when you go up and down the stairs you feel bad when you look at your body you there's no way you can't because it's unhealthy so the only way you compensate is by telling yourself you love it telling yourself you love it but when we suppress how we truly feel because the reality is these only fans women if they were made of money and came from lots of money and had lots of money and were truly secure and happy in a great relationship with family and friends and partner, would they be doing it? You don't see anyone doing OnlyFans that comes from generational wealth. Never. Impossible. Because there's a legacy. Because because legacy wealth doesn't 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 have access to that kind of content another thing you don't see and i think this is important in social media is a lot of uh, high value men they teach you know on the fresh and fit is that she should be half your age she should be you know like this people that come from money men that come from money do not date women half their age you don't see mark zuckerberg doing that you'll never see bill gates doing that People that come from a legacy and a family, they select people who they can bring to family dinners because it's a legacy. They look at a woman's family. People with new money use women the same way that new money use a gold chain. It's a status symbol. So somebody with new money, of course, will be with a woman half his age and show off with that. Somebody who comes from generational wealth and comes from a family background will know that his dad will say, what are you doing? Bring a proper woman in, and then we'll talk. So they know they've got an, uh, they've got an institution to answer to. So, so what you're saying then essentially is that men of high value and high worth, yeah, in in this sake, wouldn't wouldn't date the the single the single mum from the broken home, not because the single mum's not good and she's not attractive and all that stuff, but but because. It doesn't take the criteria to bring compromise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just like a high value woman wouldn't date a guy that's completely broken or anything like that. They don't have to compromise. They don't have to compromise. Um, That's what truly high value requires. It requires your partner not having to compromise. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a single mom or coming from a broken home or anything like that. But a true high value man also has a high value kind of background, usually. So they know that they haven't got time for or they haven't got the effort for dealing with too many uh, overheads. So they try and select wisely. Does it, but I actually do think it's wonderful when they do date single mums and do adopt a child I, and stuff. I, I actually think it's wonderful. I have to say I know some women that are single mums that are fen- not only phenomenal mums to their children, yeah. but also have done the work yeah. as well. And yeah, they may have made mistakes but those mistakes have turned into like beautiful mistakes yeah, you know I what think I'm saying? even with single dads i think when you have when you get to a certain age in your life um and and having somebody else's children is actually a blessing yeah you get to, you realize that it's a blessing it doesn't always have to be my child only your child only what happens when you date somebody who's got children is you get an access into what their priorities are in life 
if they have children and they're still out in the club all day, every day, not got their priorities straight, you're thinking they'll never have their priorities straight. Whereas if they have children, you realize that they become highly domesticated. They're in line. They've got their goals and vision. It's like I, I get an insight. I get foresight into what you would be like in the future. I already get it. So it's perfect. What do you think the biggest like misguided lie that you see in this in the so in the social right now that that kind of misguides everyone on how on how life should be and they think it's working for them but it's actually not uh, in relationship sense do you think it, it, in all senses like the biggest lie on 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 the social media scene in terms of like you know how how people should move. I think the biggest lie is phrases like um, "be independent," "be self-sufficient." You don't need anyone. You'll be fine. You got this. That's not how we're designed. You take a brand new baby. If they aren't codependent on anybody, that baby will literally die. Human beings are designed biochemically for connection. They're designed to be codependent. They're designed to love each other. They're designed to be in tribes. Never in history have people not lived in tribes. It takes five, six people to raise a child because that's how much emotional connection they are required to have. Now, we now live in a hyper-independent society that is totally individualistic and teaching everybody, you'll be fine, you got this, self-improvement, self-esteem, self, 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 and nothing to do with the group affiliation. So what happens is when you don't feel great, you feel like you've lost that life. Whereas when we had group settings, it's like, okay, I don't feel great, but my group is doing really well, my, my, my family is doing really well, my tribe is doing really well, I'm good. But now we don't have that resilience because we're totally encouraged to be solo. Do you think, though, that the lack of... Obviously, you come from a religious background. Yeah. Obviously, you're fasting at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, that your religion has instilled the values? And do you think because we've stepped away yeah. from religion a bit, and, and whether it's being a Christian or Jewish or yeah. whatever religion, do you think because we've stepped away from that, that it's become harder to have that... that that grounding in kind of sense of morals. Yeah, absolutely. Because here's the thing. Humans are designed to follow some kind of rules. We, we need a manual. This is how life is. We Human beings need a manual. And I really saw it during COVID. What happened during COVID is people who thought they followed the rules the best actually thought they were the best people in society. They thought we're the best. Like I wear my mask everywhere. I sanitize everything. I'm the best. Because what happens is people who we need rules because it tells us that we're a good person when we follow rules. And it's, you, you know, like when you get the work stitches, uh, snitches that will snitch on people at work because they think following the rules makes them a good person. That's what people think. Now, when you get rule, if you don't follow religion, you're still going to be following rules, whether it's from the government, whether it's from social media, whether it's from um, your friends, you're going to fo fo uh, follow social norms. Isn't it better that we follow social norms that were, which I believe were either sent by God or good for our soul? Even if it's not, even if you don't believe it's by, by God, the general rules tend to be love thy neighbor, give to charity, pray, so, uh, disconnect from this world. The rules tend to be good for your soul. So I just think that you're going to follow rules anyway. Why not choose rules that are actually healthy? And uh, I know people think, oh, but there's unhealthy rules in there. But look where society's taken us. 